What is Zephon? It is a 4x turn-based strategy game set in a post-apocalyptic world from the developers of Warhammer 40,000 Gladius, with a unique tactical combat system. At least, that is the sales pitch from the developers and publishers Proxy Studios, and we will find out together how accurate it is. Zephon is also the main part of the game's plot and the name of the main character slash faction. Confused? At first I was too, but I will explain. This is all just part of the reason why I think that this game is an attempt to make something totally new and why I am taking the time to talk about this game. My name is Peter and I have showcased this game alongside many similar new and upcoming strategy games in my video lists. If you haven't seen them before, here is a handy link up here and below. The trailer you see here is a cinematic one, while gameplay can be seen on a select few screenshots which have been released a while back and I will touch on that aspect later during the video, as well as on an exclusive clip. The cinematic might not show us what we will be playing, but it does tell us about the story, characters and setting. And that setting in Zephan might be planet Earth, but you would not be able to recognize it. Not only has the planet gone through a lot of changes, but so have its inhabitants. Next to the few remaining humans, it is now home to both aliens and an AI inside machines. As for the animals, they are mutated and mostly prey on the weak and defenseless. For this post-apocalyptic world, we have mainly the aliens called the Akrin to tank. They came in from outer space and rained destruction on the planet. Cliché, I know. Few humans survived as the military was unable to make a dent in the aliens' advanced tech. Think Independence Day level extinction event minus Will Smith. But plot twist! And interestingly enough, not too far from Dimensions movie storyline, the aliens occupation runs into a new, free and ever-evolving sentient AI in control of mighty machines and robots. They prove much more worthy defenders and force the aliens back to their ships where they now cower and hide. This might seem like a great turn of events, but the humans are now caught in the middle of this ground war. Some have adapted to this new situation by accepting the alien's creed, others by taking on machine parts and traits, while a few have stayed on the old and narrow path of humanity, warts and all. And in this game, those choices are called exactly that, paths. There is the human path, pragmatic and following traditional military decree, mainly bulky tanks and troopers, scouts and gadgets with an occasional nuke. The voice path is the domain of the Akrin and human mystics. It involves experimentation, secrets and inner wisdom spiced up by physical corruption ending in eldritch horrors. Think warp and chaos of Warhammer 40k on a planetary level. The last one is the cyber path, people trying to understand and even use machine tech fused with flesh but with dire consequences, basically cyberpunk. This of course is similar to the Adeptus Mechanicus if we make another Warhammer 40,000 comparison. This path also gets you closer to the actual Zephon entity. Now, the answer to the question of what is Zephon? It is a complicated one. There is clear evidence that this AI, or as something, a fusion of many AIs, were present in modern-day data networks before the alien invasion. It, well they, grew, changed and self-evolved without oversight or boundaries in the digital world. Its original purpose is unknown and the war it led on the aliens was merciless and costly. In the timeline where you start to play the game, it's actually broken up into pieces but actively trying to put itself together. Its code and parts of its programming are still a threat through its wardens. These large robots wield a circular saw, have a flamethrower, as well as a missile pod. They guard the server farms and manufacturing facilities of Zephon 3 and can even cannibalize other machines to repair themselves. Just like the alien Akrin, the Zephon 3 entity with its autonomous appendages is an ever-present NPC faction in this game. Such NPCs control territory and defend it actively with patrols and passively with emplacements. They represent a key part of the storyline and game world. You, as your faction's leader, can communicate with them, get quests or just declare war on them. These NPC factions have their own leaders and with those special units and abilities. 
keeping good relations with them might just gain you that necessary edge over the other factions. The leader I mentioned is a choice you make at the game's setup screen, while the paths I talked about before are chosen during gameplay. This leader will be your face in diplomatic talks with other factions and their leaders and will also influence your own population. It is this persona who will start new building projects in other armies. Every leader is unique because of his or her personality traits, but there are also actual differences in gameplay mechanics, quite similar to the system in Civilization down to the single settlement rule or powerful buffs like making a picked unit invulnerable for a time. Beyond the personality traits that leaders start with, they can also gain new ones as a result of certain events. Some of these will mean actual passive bonuses or drawbacks, but others mean gaining access to actual powers. On the macro level, other leaders with similar traits will be more likely to speak with your own leader but also less likely if you have all the opposite traits. And when I say they will speak, I mean that in the literal sense, fully voiced characters with unique dialogue lines. Now, if they were just recorded with actual actors in costumes, that would be mental. I mean, does anyone still remember Civilization's two advisors and the unforgettable Command & Conquer live actor cutscenes? But okay, I know this is an indie developer, full-on acting is a bit far from their budget. Anyway, this choice of a leader will have cosmetic consequences on your faction's logo, on units, UI and buildings, as well as the look of the capital. And just in case you were wondering, yes, you'll be able to make a game with duplicate leaders. But let me get to the main point. What is new and different in Zephan gameplay-wise? First of all, there is the involved economic model, as the developers call it, where simple resources are combined into more complex ones, like what you have in the Settlers franchise, Factorio and even Satisfactory. Additionally, when you pay for the production of something, the cost in resources is paid up front and in full, kinda like in an RTS. This of course has a domino effect on gameplay, because now, in this 4x turn-based game, you have to think of build orders and available resources from the start. As you might know, if you have played 40k Gladius, these developers created a much more in-depth combat system than the usual kind you find in this type of a game. So stacks of doom and similar but post C5 tactics don't work here. You will have to learn about the units, have some tactical skill and read the tooltips. Each unit has a special combat role and most have unique weapons, skills and even upgrades. Going a step further, the devs are going to make it so that upgrades change the visual look of a unit so your army won't be full of clones with just different stats. I am looking at you, Civilization. As for the visuals, we are being promised a distinctive look and atmosphere that is going to be gritty and dark, properly representing a post-apocalyptic world with more realism and less cartoonish textures compared to some similar contemporary games. Put all together, this is going to be a 4x turn-based game with some aspects from real-time strategy games with a complex economy system, fully voiced diplomacy of both factions and their leaders, three very different technological paths in a totally new IP and lore invented by the developers from Proxy Studios. Oh, and I almost forgot, the modding for this game will be totally open, so players can change everything from the look of the UI to the individual unit stats. It's all mostly made using standard, open file formats, perfect for both amateur and professional modders to tinker with. And even where it's not, the developers will do their best to make it easy for modders. To me, it all looks great on paper, the cinematic is a bit more static and not as visceral, but that is just my personal preference. The few gameplay screenshots are a bit old to make any standing conclusions, which is why I reached out to developers and they shared this exclusive with me. It is an animation of a hero unit from the cyber path and you can see not just her arsenal of cold steel, but also her combat moves. One of those is her elite ability, specifically the one where she jumps and stabs around. I must admit my first thoughts after seeing this were, this is what happens when a ninja makes a baby with a snake. 
<laughs> I do plan to showcase more of this game in the future and I have a list as long as I'm tall of other games I have yet to show off and also revisit. If you have enjoyed this video, do not forget to hit that like button and subscribe to see my next ones. Thank you for watching and happy gaming.